Well, right now at 530, we are tracking Tropical Storm Debbie. We have team coverage showing you the conditions in real time. Plus, we are going one on one with Governor Ron DeSantis laying out his plans to keep Floridians safe from the storm. Thank you for staying with us here at 530. I'm Nadine Giannis. Tonight, it is all eyes on the tropics as the entire west coast of Florida is now starting to feel the impacts of Tropical Storm Debbie inching closer to landfall and timing it all out for you is Chief Meteorologist Dennis Phillips on this Sunday evening. Hey, Dennis. Hey, Nadine. How you doing, everybody? So my hope is you are watching us either on your phone or watching us on your computer or watching us on your TV and you're just like, I'm not going anywhere anywhere because you don't want to be out in this from this point until about 10 o'clock tonight. This is the worst that we are going to see. And for the folks who are saying, ah, I'm not getting any rain or I'm not getting any wind. Yeah, you are. There's a lot of it from I-75 West. Now inland areas, again, we've been saying this for a while. You're not going to see the wind or the rain that coastal areas and folks in Hillsborough County, again, pretty much from I-75 West is picking up the bulk of it and it has just begun. I mean, there's a lot more where that came from. Very heavy rain. Nadine will talk more about power outages coming up in a minute, but we're having lots of them. And then in addition to the strong winds of 45 to 55 miles an hour and then the surge issues. And that's what's going on right now. And Lydia showed you earlier on around the bay where there was some water coming up over the seawall. It's not incredibly bad there yet, but I do think it may go a little bit higher. This is just torrential downpours. I mean, driving in an afternoon thunderstorm is one thing. But driving in this kind of rain where there's just no break, I mean, all of Pinellas County getting it. There's more and this is all moving south to north, right? It's rotating around Tropical Storm Debbie. Now this green, that flash flood warning, that's from surge. That is actually a flash flood warning issued because of surge coming in off the Gulf. And I'm getting reports from Siesta Key that the water is up about two or three feet as well which was about the forecast. Remember, they were forecasting two to four feet. The NAC was three to five across northern areas. Now, there was a tornado warning in this area, but if you were watching a few minutes ago, it just didn't really look that impressive to me, and now it has been canceled. This is where it was. There was some rotation briefly, but now we're not seeing any, but we will continue to keep our eyes on it just in case something else pops, and that is always the possibility. We are still under a tornado watch until 8 o'clock tonight, and that could be expanded northward and probably will be into the wee hours of the morning. But again, there's all that rain just coming in along that band, and once a band sets up over you, quite often it takes a while to get on out. So there's your center. This is all rotating counterclockwise, so anything that you see down here is going to be coming up for us. That is your nighttime forecast. Rainfall the last 24 hours. Obviously, it's been heaviest across the western counties. As the heavier rain continues to lift north, these totals will also climb. Probably a solid area of four to eight inches of rain is what we're going to end up with, with some areas even more than a foot of rain. And then once landfall occurs, this thing's going to linger for a couple of days in northern Florida and southern Georgia. So I think from Jacksonville to Lake City over to Live Oak, you know, back to Gainesville, which by the way, no classes for UF or FSU tomorrow. Uh, there's going to be some serious water. Speaking of water, storm surge warnings remain in effect for everybody except for Sarasota County, expecting three to five feet of surge. I mentioned this throughout the day. It's worth noting again, the Weather Service, the Hurricane Center, their definition of these numbers, this is the most reasonable worst case scenario. That is what it means. It's not an arbitrary number. That three to five feet, Arapica North, is most reasonable worst case scenario. Now, I would argue we rarely see worst case scenario, but sometime we do. So they want to show you what the worst it could be. Prepare for that and know that it'll probably be a notch or two below that if we're lucky, if it isn't the worst case. Flood watch remains in effect for pretty much the entire area until early next week, till tomorrow, till Monday. There's the center. Now there is a little bit of drier air coming in, but boy, look at the blow up over the last boom over the last hour or two. That is an indication that this is getting stronger. And as it moves north, we're expecting this number to go from 65 at landfall, maybe as high as 95. If that's the case, it still would be a category one hurricane, but pretty close to cat two. And then it slows down and hangs out around the southeast for quite a while. A closer look, landfall very similar to Adalia 
around the Steenhatchee area with winds of about 90, 85 or 90, but the water is a real issue with the slowdown and additional rain. And again, Governor DeSantis mentioned this in his press conference. We've been talking about it. Some of the models are hinting at a loop back across the northern Gulf. Yeah, maybe, probably not, but maybe. Later tonight, these are your wind gusts, 40 to 55 miles an hour. This is through midnight. It continues, so expect these strong winds most of the night until tomorrow morning and still windy all day tomorrow, but 30 to 35 to 40 as opposed to 45 to 55 and rainfall potential again from this point on still another three to six inches of rain added on to what we've already seen. And lastly, I want to show you this. The orange color is what we're getting right now, and that is these winds gusting up to 60 miles an hour in a few spots. But watch what happens by nine o'clock tonight. The heaviest wind then moves offshore. We're in a band west of I-75 of around 40 to 50 miles an hour. And then by tomorrow morning, hurricane winds start to develop as landfall occurs early tomorrow morning.